Hurricane season is upon us. In fact, the National Weather Service is predicting 12 to 17 named storms this year. So how does the Navy and the Marine Corps prepare to aid civil authorities during natural disasters? Well, I was the first YouTuber ever invited to Fort Story, Virginia to watch the Navy and the Marine Corps practice DISC or defense support to civil authorities. And what I saw really amazed me. It all starts with the ship. This is the USS Fort Lauderdale, LPD-28. Its mission during hurricane season is to respond to any natural disaster from the sea. But first, a little bit about this ship. The USS Fort Lauderdale is a landing platform dock, or LPD. It's a marvel of modern naval engineering. The ship holds roughly 300 Navy crew members, 600 Marines, and enough vehicles, equipment, supplies, medical facilities, and repair facilities to support a battalion as they hit an enemy beach. The ship is equipped with two crucial features to do its job a flight deck and its associated hangar bay, and a well deck. This is where they can launch and recover boats. The flight deck can launch or land two MV-22 Ospreys simultaneously, and it has enough space to hold five of them if the hangar bay is also used. This well deck floods so that it can launch and recover vehicles and boats directly from the water. It can even hold two LCAC, or landing craft air cushion transport vehicles, to get supplies from ship to shore. And what really blew my mind is that the flight deck and the well deck can operate simultaneously. So you can have things flying off the deck while floating out of the ship's stern simultaneously. Now, it, this sounds incredibly dangerous. It is, and it, it takes a good bit of coordination, which is really a testament to the professionalism of the Navy and Marines who do these jobs. Now, when configured for humanitarian relief, the ship may be loaded with a Marine Corps Combat Logistics Battalion. And this battalion is reinforced with security, engineering, aviation, and support services such as contracting and dispersing. Once reinforced, the Combat Logistics Battalion is known as a Maritime DISCA Task Force. Think of them like uh, modular Lego bricks that can be reconfigured to respond to pretty much any hurricane emergency. The unit or task force contains a logistics combat element with motor T or transportation, landing support and beach operations, helicopter support teams, engineers with a full range of horizontal and vertical construction, route clearance, debris removal, and utility support, and finally, water purification. The task force also contains a ground combat element that consists of a platoon of combat engineers, although these engineers provide security and augment the construction, route clearance, and debris removal capabilities. This is typically done the old-fashioned way, with picks, shovels, and chainsaws. They also have two 624KR earth movers that can be equipped with buckets for moving debris or forks for moving pallets. Now, all these people need to stay hydrated, and the public water infrastructure may be damaged in an emergency. So the water purification marines come in here. They use the LWPS, or Lightweight Water Purification System, which can make drinkable water from any source, including salt water or water contaminated by chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear agents. For vertical transportation, the task force also contains six MV-22 Ospreys that are shore-based, but they're assigned to the ship and they're able to conduct missions to and from the assigned ship. And finally, the unit has a command element for overall command and control of the forces and liaison with local community and government officials. Now these people are important, but you can't do everything. Sometimes you need civilian help, so you may have to set up contracts with local vendors to provide food services at shelters or haul away debris. And that's where the Marine Corps contracting officers and dispersers come in. I never even knew about this. They are literally Marine Corps financial managers who are empowered to generate and sign contracts up to a quarter million dollars so that local vendors on site can provide disaster relief services. So how does all this stuff get to shore? Well, it can happen in one of two ways, by air or by hovercraft. For air movement, six MV-22 Ospreys are usually assigned to this DISCA task force. They're usually based nearby since, like I said, there isn't enough room on the LPD, but they can get there pretty darn quick because they fly like a plane but can rotate their nacelles and land like a helicopter. This gives them incredible flexibility to quickly fly to the area in need and begin support, including casualty evacuation or aid distribution. The Osprey's cargo bay can hold about 20,000 pounds of equipment, and if it can't fit inside, then they can sling load 15,000 pounds and move it from ship to shore. And this includes vehicles. 
On the boat side, the U.S. Navy provides two LCACs. These hovercraft ride on the ocean and the beach, carrying 75 tons of equipment at 35 knots, or roughly 40 miles per hour. Now, these LCACs have a range of 300 miles, so if you park an LPD about a mile from the coast, they can ferry supplies back and forth all day without having to waste time to refuel. Now, all of this would be useless without the landing support. These sailors are the beach masters. They pick the landing zone on the beach for the LCACs. Now, there's a number of components necessary to figure out the best place to land. The ideal beach for landing is one with deep water close to shore, a firm bottom of hard packed sand and gravel, minimum variations in tides, and a moderate to gentle underwater beach gradient. It also has no underwater obstructions like coral or sandbars, and little to no current or surf. Once the site is selected, the beach masters erect panels indicating the left and the right limits, which lets the LCACs know where to land. Once that's set up, the landing team designates where the cargo is going to go. The first vehicles off the boat are usually the earth movers in forklift configuration. This allows the Marines to begin unloading cargo immediately, or that can change depending on the mission. Usually, a Marine Corps wrecker is also in the first wave as well, because a vehicle that's stranded in the sand will hamper operations, and the Marines have special teams set up for emergencies that will pull stranded or broken vehicles out of the way so the landing can continue. Watching this exercise really impressed the heck out of me. I saw 19-year-old kids working as a well-oiled machine, offloading and categorizing cargo rapidly and efficiently. This intricate dance of preparation and coordination that unfolds as hurricane season approaches is a testament to the remarkable capabilities of the U.S. Navy and the Marine Corps providing aid during natural disasters. I'd like to thank a number of sailors and Marines who helped contribute to this story and make it possible. Thank you, Captain Gil McCarthy, Commanding Officer of the USS Fort Lauderdale, for inviting me onto your ship and allowing me to interview your crew. Thank you to Navy Captain Javier Medina, Commanding Officer of Saltcraft Unit 4, for his contribution to the LCAC side of the story. Thank you to Marine Corps Lieutenant Colonel Zachary Embers, Battalion Commander of Combat Logistics Battalion 26, for his help in teaching me the capabilities of the Marine Corps Logistics Battalion. Thank you to Navy Lieutenant Matthew Neal, Operations Officer of the USS Fort Lauderdale, for giving me insight into the capabilities of your ship. Thank you to Marine Lieutenant Kristen McAdams for her insight into beach landings. And thank you to Navy Lieutenant Commander Paul Newell and Marine Corps Captain Isaac Lambert, Public Relations Officers. I know the two of you went to bat for me to watch this exercise, so thank you for giving me the opportunity to tell this disc of story. Hey, this is my job now, traveling around and telling the military story. So if you want to support this channel, consider getting one of my Department of the Boat People shirts, hoodies, or stickers from Bunker Branding. You can also get a Substack membership for five bucks to access content I can't show on YouTube or get a cameo greeting for the person in your life who loves the channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. Oh, hi, America. It's me, Elon. Uh, if you want to be cool like me, go and get a Ryan McBeth t-shirt or hoodie from Bunker Branding. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get a high mile shirt because it fires rockets and rockets are pretty cool, just like me. Ha 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 ha, you fool. It is me, Mark Zuckerberg from Facebook. And I will be the coolest once I get a Patriot shirt because the system is fully automated, just like me. <laughs> I'm going to get a U.S. Navy Department of the Boat People hoodie because I love their management style. Now, I'll be cooler than any of you lads once I get my drone sweet drone shot. Now, I'm going to get a landmine marker shirt because they blow up just like windows. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to get. Oh, no. It is Steve Wozniak from uh, Apple. That's right, you nerds. You think you're the coolest for wearing a shirt? Well, Ryan McBeth is all the work. Yeah. So go buy a shirt from Bunker branding to fund Ryan Macbeth to increase your understanding. Oh yeah!